Tina with Target Tamers and we're going to discuss the differences between an 8x42 binocular versus a 10x42 binocular. I'll touch on the advantages of both and which pair could serve better for hunting, bird watching, a safari and events such as sports matches and concerts. I will then break down the differences between magnification, field of view, brightness and image stability and I'll also give you some comparison photos from similar quality binoculars so you can visually compare the difference. First off, a real quick brief on what do the numbers mean. I refer to the 8x42 and the 10x42 binoculars, easily saying 8s and 10s. Now the first number before the X is the amount of power or magnification that that binocular has. The second number after the X is the diameter of the objective lenses. The 8 times binoculars magnify it 8 times more than what the naked eye can see, so it looks that much closer. Same with the 10s. It magnifies that image or that target 10 times than what the naked eye can see. Given that both binoculars have the same number after the X, they both have 42 millimeter objective lenses. 8x42 binocular pros. Now while many may gravitate towards a higher powered 10 times binoculars, there's a lot that the 8x42s can offer you as well. They are still considered a high power, they are cheaper than 10 times binoculars, they have wide fields of view, they're easier to use a freehand for that image stability. And they're also really good, really effective for close to mid-range glassing. While many 8x42 binoculars do come compact and more lightweight versus the 10x42 binoculars, most of the time it's really a non-issue, especially from the same manufacturer. Case in point, the 8x42 and 10x42 binoculars are the same size, although the 10x42 binoculars do feel just slightly heavier. 10x42 binocular pros, considered high power, it can produce a better image resolution, it is better for open country and long range glassing. It can also perform better in low light due to the higher twi twilight factor and it is considered a high magnification end of the spectrum for general all purpose use. Open country, mountain and spot and stalk hunting. The longer reach and uh, closer views for identifying, measuring and counting points is a must have for western hunters and those that spot and stalk. The 10x42 is the binocular of choice and it can yield even greater results for image stability when it's tripod mounted. Now the sacrifice in field of view is a compromise but perhaps seen as a compromise that's worth it for better low light and long ranging performance. Timber stand and bow hunting. Eight times magnification is the binocular of choice for hunting from the sand and the timber uh, with a bow and even waterfowl hunting. Although six to seven times magnification binoculars could do great here too. In these types of hunts, mounting a binocular to a tripod is neither convenient nor doable. So the ultimate image stability from eight times binoculars is truly appreciated. The wide fields of view uh, to see the bigger picture, to see any type of movement that's going on and the brightness factor from the 8x binoculars will keep that eye strain down a little, especially in those dim conditions when you're in thick timber and in the woods. Bird watching. Either the 8s or the 10s would be an appropriate binocular for this type of application. The wide fields of view, the easy ability to locate and follow birds in flight, and the better handling of image stability from an 8x binocular makes it the better choice for bird watching, especially if you're in the woods. However, the 10x42s offer just that little bit extra a close-up view for detail and a little bit longer uh, glassing ability for longer reach, say for over large expanses of open water like at lakes, marshes, or even when you're watching slow-moving shorebirds at the beach. Specialty wildlife tours and safari tours. Now either the 8s and the 10s would be great for this type of wildlife observation. However, with the 8s you have those wide fields of view to be able to see everything, well a lot of what's going on in the bigger picture for any type of movement. And it also provides better image stability, especially if you plan on being on a moving platform such as a Jeep or a tour bus. However, the 10x42s cannot be dismissed. That higher power allows you to get even closer views, especially on targets where it's not safe to approach to get any closer. You'll definitely appreciate that extra two times magnification for wide open country expanses and in the safari. 
events, concerts, and sports. Now, while more magnification sounds really tempting, it's all about expanding that field of view. So with the tent, you will be able to see what's going on with the pitcher or with the batter, even the lead singer on stage, but you won't see the bigger picture of what the uh, side dancers are doing or what's happening at the bases. So more field of view allows you to see bigger of the picture simultaneously. Binocular features. If you can understand binocular features, then you put yourself into a position where you can make an informed decision about what binocular is right for you. And you can also determine which binocular feature you really want to have for any type of application you wish to do. Magnification. The two times magnification difference between the eights and the tens is noticeable, especially when you're glassing those long distance ranges and you need to acquire more detail. Uh, it's good for uh, lakes, uh, open country, field hunting, and anywhere where that extra two times magnification will make a difference to the user. Ultimate image sharpness and resolution will be noticed, especially when it's tripod mounted. But there are times when the higher power can do more hurt than it would do good. There are specific terrains like in the thick timber where it's too much power and too narrow of a field of view. They are slightly heavier than eight times binoculars. They also cost a bit more than eight times binoculars and that image stability can be difficult to handle when you're in adverse conditions. Think gusty winds. Field of view. Field of view is often expressed as uh, X number of feet at a thousand yards or as an angular measurement. Now it show, tells you how much of the scene that you can see through the circles, through the binocular, known as field of view. Now a large field of view, a wide field of view is greatly desired by hunters, bird watchers, and those watching any type of event. And that's because you can see more of the bigger picture of what's going on and you have an easier and faster ability to locate and track moving targets. The general rule is that eight times binoculars have a wider field of view versus 10 times binoculars. But this does take some research because there is no industry standard or fixed field of view that all eight times binoculars should have. So this does vary by binocular and by manufacturer. Case in point, we have the Maven C1 8x42 binoculars with the field of view of 341 feet at 1,000 yards. Then we have the Burris Drop Teen 10 by 42 binoculars with a field of view of 340 feet at 1,000 yards. Not too different after all, right? Additionally, there are some other things that can affect field of view, and that is prism design. We have here two 10 by 42 binoculars, Maven B1.2 with wide angle Schmidt Pachan prisms, and their C1 10 by 42 with standard Schmidt Pachan prisms. Now the wide angle ones, the B1.2s, have a field of view of 362 feet at 1,000 yards, and the standard one has a field of view of 314 feet at 1,000 yards. That's a pretty big significant difference. Key point here is research will be key. There are exceptions to the rule and there are 10 times powered binoculars with wide fields of view. Exit pupil. Now in terms of how bright binoculars are, there is a spec for that, the brightness factor. It is calculated by squaring the diameter of the exit pupil. So all 8x42 binoculars will have identical brightness specs and all 10x42 binoculars will have identical brightness specs. To get the exit pupil, you must divide the aperture of the objective lenses by the magnification. And this is how we know that all 8x42 binoculars have an exit pupil of 5.25 millimeters, and all 10x42 binoculars have an exit pupil of 4.2 millimeters. Now that one millimeter might not seem like a big deal, but it does play a big difference in how much surface area of brightness that can be perceived by the eye. You can see the exit pupil if you were to uh, point your binoculars to a blank wall in a brightly lit room and they will look like hovering circles in the eyepieces. But exit pupil and the brightness factor are not the only specs that matter. Quality glass and quality coatings are just as important as they are what regulate 
how much of that light and how well it is transmitted to the eye. Now, if all else were equal, the eights would be brighter and the eights would perform better in dim conditions. Twilight factor. So the eights are brighter than tens. You can have a bright picture, but do you have the resolution needed to make out your target in low light conditions? This is especially important for bird watchers in the woods and for a lot of types of hunting. Now, when light is lost or things start to get dark, image quality is lost. And this is often seen as a loss in contrast and sharpness. You find it harder to make out your target. The twilight factor gives you an idea of how it's supposed to perform in low light conditions. Like many other specs, it can be calculated by finding the square root of the magnification multiplied by the aperture. Obviously, tens will have a higher twilight factor versus eights. But like the exit pupil discussion, it will ultimately be the glass and the coatings that will make a big difference in its low light performance. Image stability. More power means a greater need for image stabilization. There's no point in having higher power if you can't hold it steady enough to be able to resolve anything through the binoculars. So with that train of thought, it's easy to deduce that the eights provide better image stability versus the tens. But truth be told, most people don't find a significant difference in handling either the eights or the tens. One other thing to remember is the conditions. If it's overly windy, it just might very well be easier to use the 8s for that better image stability versus the 10s. If you're overly concerned about it, you can always tripod mount your 10s for that better stability or the 8s just might be for you. Which is best for you? You'll have to evaluate what your needs are and how you'll be using the binoculars. Generally, eights are good for bow, stand, timber, fowl hunting, bird watching, watching events like sports and concerts, and for general wildlife observation, you'll have the benefits of having those wide fields of view. Now, tens are really good for open country, a lot of types of hunting, uh, long distance glassing, and you have the ability to acquire a little bit more uh, detail due to that ability to get even closer. Of course, you mustn't forget that quality glass matters, but hopefully by now you have a better understanding of the differences between an 8x42 binocular and a 10x42 binocular. The full write-up to this guide will be in a link for you down below. As always, everyone, thanks for tuning in. Like, subscribe, and get outside.